Um, we're just going to jump in because I can't control my excitement. You guys, I have <laughs> Pauline Norton on the podcast this week. Welcome to the show, Pauline. It is so amazing to have you. <laughs> yeah, Thank like. you so much for having me. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. And I just want to tell everybody who's listening that definitely go and check out the video on YouTube because you're only getting like 80% when you hear her, when you see her, it's going to all make sense what she's going to share with us today. So um, could you tell my audience a little bit about who you are and how you got to be where you are today? Uh, my name is Pauline Odin. I'm the founder of Fighter Diet. I started my fitness journey when I was 17. I saw Arnold on the cover magazine and that just made me change from starving myself and kind of trying to just be thin. I didn't understand this whole shredded muscle. That's what I wanted, but I didn't understand what. I saw that and just kind of thought, that is my ticket to America. I'm going to become the best in Sweden, and then I'm going to go there. And then somehow I realized that people give up on this because it's too hard. And I committed, I'm going to be stronger than that. So I put everything into three whole years of dedication before I'm going to step on stage and show the results and then like win the show and come to America, the typical thing. Said and done. So that's what I'm doing now. Some 24 years later, I'm here in America living the dream that I built from 17. Nowadays, I'm my whole thing is to take my mission. I made it my life mission to help women find how to be healthy and strong and lean when you're not naturally that way, when you have this big appetite, but you also have this dream body that is lean and it's not your body. I was like chubby and like I love to eat, right? And strong, but not, not lean. So how do you make that together and love it? How do you actually love staying lean, which is struggling for people? That's what I wanted to solve and then give it to the world as my gift. That's what I'm doing. And now I'm bringing women from diet prison, taking them out from that, leave diet prison to come to fight at Nirvana. So basically what I'm doing is I teach women how to live fitness lives. So you actually love it because if you love it, you're not going to fall off the wagon because you keep on doing what makes you love it. And when you love it, you keep doing it. So that's what I'm saying. You know, trying to make women fall in love with what I fall in love with. And then everything just kind of flows into it. Right. Oh, I love it. I mean, I know I've done I've done a couple of fighter diet programs in the past and I always have great success with them. For me, um, I just turned 50 this past, well, just, you know, June. And I started lifting weights in my, I guess my mid to late twenties, because similar to you, I saw something in a magazine. I think I saw something in shape magazine. Remember shape magazine when yeah, I was like yes. all the rage or muscle and fitness hers. I don't even know if they exist anymore, but I saw, I saw some woman in there and she had the most beautiful arms and back. And I thought, I looked in the mirror and I was like, well, how do I get that too? And that's when I became really interested. At first it was a vanity thing. You know, I wanted, I wanted to look like what I saw in the magazines, but eventually maybe it was similar for you. It became this like lifestyle that I couldn't get enough of. And it, it wasn't so much about the vanity. It was about how I started to feel and how it was helping me build my confidence. So when I got, when I stepped into the weight room, I didn't know anything. I mean, I just went over and I picked up the five pounds and I was like, okay, you do these things and then you do these things and we'll just keep <laughs> doing that. But eventually I learned more because I wanted to keep going. And I knew I couldn't do that every day in the gym because I was getting, I just, I knew that wasn't working. Um, so fast forward, you know, 25 years later and I just, I love lifting weights. I love the lifestyle and it's not as complicated as everybody wants to make it. So we could talk for hours, I mean, hours about women in the gym and lifting weights, but I really want to break it down for my listeners as simple as possible because there's so much misinformation out there about women and building muscle and what does it really take? And can you do this in your 40s? Can you do this in your 50s? Can you really, you know, achieve the look that you want once you hit a certain uh, life developmental stage, which we'll call menopause, but I'm not going <laughs> to. First of all, my belief is that menopause, you don't get fat because of menopause. You, and I say get fat, like you don't, because I hear so many women my age, like I got this belly and it's because of menopause. No, it's because you're aging and you haven't built muscle and you haven't developed the nutrition habits that you need to continue to, or to add muscle and then to, um, you know, get all of your systems. And I'm not the expert here, you know, correctly working. All right. So I'm going to stop talking because you are the expert. <laughs> Tell me, okay, so 
Do you, should we take that myth, the first of myth yeah, about let's menopause? Take that okay, myth. take it. Let's, take it away. We're gonna have a keep it simple, stupid rules now because okay. we have, like I said, we could talk for years about this and never get out of it. Just talk, 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 and we don't have to that. We want results. We want to know what matters and what doesn't. Okay, menopause. Hormones don't eat for you. When you are going through life and you're growing and you're aging naturally, if you're not keeping training your life, you're just not maintaining muscle mass. Women are just going to lose what you're not maintaining. It's no different than if you have a garden and you don't water it, it's going to be drought. So when you then hit a certain age, you just notice that you gain fat, but it's not that you your body is suddenly impossible to stay lean. You are just not living the life that makes you have the body that is the manifestation of the lifestyle. You are a sum of all your actions. Every day you eat and you train, and if you don't, you become that. So women are extremely stressed about loose skin, aging, losing your van- your beauty or something. But what I'm trying to tell you that if you can get into bodybuilding and training fitness, you're actually doing the best anti-aging treatment in your world because you do the turnover. You do the, the universe routine of building it down, burning it down, like earthquakes, tsunamis, all that stuff in order to regenerate the tissues. That is the trigger you need to stimulate to stay young. So you can actually become younger in your body and your mind and feel it when you're 50, like you're 20. When you're 20, you feel like you're 80 because you're like huffing and puffing, you're overweight and so on. So the whole body being like, you're going to learn as a woman that thin skin is a good thing. You're going to notice that we love the veins of the arms that other women are like, oh my God, I want porcelain skin. Because when you're into bodybuilding training, you're going to love the beauty of strong muscles and anatomy, your real body. You're going to start changing the way from wanting to be a Barbie doll into being a real woman. So that is kind of what I wanted to know that it's just the world that tells you that life happened by you are aging and then you get scared. No, you should just go lift. You're going to gain muscle. The muscle keeps you young. It's where you're putting the calories instead of the fat cells. Right. Right. I love that. So it, you broke it down so well. All right. So let's talk about the women who are hearing this and they get it and they're like, okay, so you're telling me I need to lift. What type of lifting do they need to do? Because so many women tell me they don't have time. They don't want to go to the gym. They don't know what to do at the gym. It's overwhelming. It's one more thing they got to add to their schedule. So what is the least amount of work for the best bang for their buck? Does that make sense? Yeah. So okay. it used to say, they used to say that to have health benefits, you have to spend 20 to 30 minutes a day, five days in a row. So like 150 minutes, like very little amount mm. to be healthy. Now, health is one thing. Aesthetics is a whole other game. Because you can simply just, I say this to people who get overwhelmed. If you just want to live the lifestyle, be healthy and happy and continue being that, the more you do it, just do that. Eat the healthy life and exercise. End of story. Don't overcomplicate it. Okay. But now to take it from aesthetics, you look the part that you're living, it's going to have a little bit more. So I have, I have a system of... Let's say I made it happen to be, I can train you 10 minutes that I know for sure. If you put in 10 minutes a day, I say you have met my criteria because 90% of what you want anyway is going to be nutrition adherence. So I'm going to coach you that because I just made this video work as follow along, come along. You don't have to plan. You don't have to write up. Just come into the gym. Come, 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 come to Pauline. Right. Then I'm just going to destroy, kill you in 10 minutes because I just took out the, the all the time between the sets and i'm gonna tell you why i do this i have injuries and top from top to top everywhere mm-hmm. arthritis and then that's not a sad face thing right. it's perfect because this way i can tell everyone that you are all just excuses because i can overcome this if you want to so the 10 minutes then is that i took out the time of sitting on the bench typing that we used to do in bodybuilding training to limit your time you have to put in to stop you from training so hard you break down because what i did i made you fail and fail muscle fatigue over and over it's like a sparring it's like a sparring like go all out for 10 minutes then you wiped out you just cut an hour of training into 10 minutes right that's what i do that's on your app is that your app yeah okay well i'm 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 developing it but it's a one way of a portal that it's a link and you can put it on any screen anywhere but yes i'm developing the app so it's eat and train with me so it's like everything in one place but that's like oh of course you want that take some time so 10 minutes 
is what I say, if you train with me, not anyone else program, because I cannot endorse that. I know if people just sit in the gym 10 minutes, time matters and what you do with your time. Right, right. So if you have limited time, the shorter the workout, the more focused. So that's what I'm saying. Come to me and then let go of thinking you're going to train heavy and hard because I'm training you how to build muscle, how to progress beyond injuries. And if you're 40 or 50 years old, you're not, you're not going to have the way to train like 20. Trust me. I don't want to. Everything's just going to break down before you have built enough muscle. So it's more like this. If you want to be lean and strong and happy and love what you do, train the way I do now. Train so I'm broken down. I can't do what I used to do. This is when you're going to love the way. I did this, started this thing in November because I had no other choice. I had to change the way I train or I'm never going to be able to. So I made my choice. And I say, I'm so in love with that. I got a second win. I fell madly in love with training again. I was, I didn't want to do it anymore because I just, what am I going to do? You've done this same thing over and over, right? So yeah, right. 10 minutes. Yeah. So, okay. I'm really fascinated by this because after being, you know, lifting for 25 years, I mean, I'm used to like following a program where I'm doing the compound lifts, I'm squatting, I'm deadlifting, I'm benching, I'm pulling up, I'm doing all those things, which I like to do. But as I'm but aging, it gets, it gets, well, it gets boring and my body just doesn't, it just hurts a little bit more. Um, yeah. And I get that, like, it's just what my body's doing. So I still like to do those things, but I'm really intrigued by this, you know, come work out with me for 10 minutes a day and you can maintain yeah. what oh, you've yeah. built. So, okay. So I could maintain what I've built. What, so what you're saying is for women who are just getting started, this like 10 minutes a day intense with Pauline could be what exactly what they need. That's all yes. they need. Okay. So I'm going to say this. I have a t I have shot more than 550 workouts because I do this 10 minutes at a time. So me personally, like I like to train workout after workout after workout. Let's say a beginner who has never trained their whole life. They're going to come in and do the quick playlist where you have to follow along, which is going to be kind of a welcoming of, I call it an action paralysis or a meltdown routine. So it's pretty much this. I want to skip the overwhelmingness of feeling that you don't even want to start the workout because you're terrified already. Because here's the thing, I come here and say like, oh, I'm going to take 10 minutes, right? But here's the thing, you can always pause me. And number two is that it's about starting it to get over the fears of thinking that you have to be so perfect because the workout shouldn't be about accomplish your lifts. It should be about fail. And I teach women to actually see that what is the nature of bodybuilding, the nature of athleticism to fail so you have a new goal to achieve. Right. That if you don't make that because you're so scared of being not as strong as you want to be, you're losing out all the games. Right. So I'm making women feel that come and see me, how I, I'm so happy that I can't do more than I do. So I have all this potential. So I'm trying to change everyone's mindset from thinking that I should be all this perfect into, no, that yeah. would mean you have nothing to grow. You have right. to be weak to become strong. Right. Yeah. And I see that in my, in my gym going days and, yes. but I'm so much kinder to myself now than I used to be because I have, you know, had those failures. And I think we fail in like everything in our lives. Like I failed as a wife, I failed as a mom, I failed as a therapist, I have failed as an employee. Like I've done all the things, but if we are learning from those failures and we see them as growth opportunities, really um, just get back out there. If you want it bad enough, if you really, yeah. really want it and you know what it takes, you'll get back on the horse, right? You'll, you'll get back out there and you'll, you'll give it another go. I just, so I, I can I say, I, I would just have to say there, there's yeah. a lot of people in the fitness gym culture that come from this bodybuilding mentality of hard over hard matters, you know, like this thing that I'm from, that CrossFit, gym culture, bodybuilding, everything hard, like you also competing mm -hmm. and fitness training. There's this big thing of maintaining an ego that everyone believes that your big lift is like everything and you're yeah. holding on to that like this is all you matter. And if you kind of break up from that, like you don't want to do it, it's almost like you are you are inferior. Everyone is in the gym culture. It's like, oh, you are not going to train heavy and hard. Like, are you old? Are you broken down? Mm -hmm. And I remember that I didn't know it consciously, right? But I felt this like, you're not even allowed to kind of do, to do what your body needs, allow it up and down, right? right? Because there's so much of protecting. So we're all standing and pretending we're strong together. But you cannot have that mindset for your whole life because that is so short in your mind. Like you're going to be blocked so right. there's a big big confusion about people thinking that if you have this if you don't fail 
you're going to be type A person, you know, the high achievers. Those are the ones who come to me and completely break down because they get so disappointed that they're not their, they're not their self they want to be. And then they think that I'm thinking that, oh, you should be stronger. Like, no, I know it. But they can't see that. So they kind of check out from it and just like, I can't handle that I wasn't all that. I'm like, yeah. Like, that's the perfect finally you can get somewhere <laughs> right yeah I had a so I, that kind of reminds me of um so for many years on my birthday I would do my I don't know if Pavel told you about this but I would do my age and pull-ups and I started doing no. it in my mid-30s so like okay let's say I turn 34 this year I'm gonna do 34 pull-ups I'm gonna time myself to see how long it takes but what I realized was like every year I'm doing more pull-ups because <laughs> I'm getting older and uh, that's great <laughs> yeah but it was funny but I was really proud that I could do it. And I remember one year I was pregnant. Um, I think it was 37. Yeah, I was pregnant or I can't remember. And I was doing my pull-ups. It took me longer, but I did them. And I you know, posted my video and I you know, look at me. And then in my late 40s, I mean, I was still doing it, but I hit 50 and I was like, I'm not going to do it this year. Like, yeah. And I had my friend text me. He's like, I haven't seen your video yet. Where's your 50 pull-ups? And I was like, you know, I could do it. But <laughs> I really, your hundred. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what am I going to keep doing this for? Like, I just, it finally hit me. Like, I don't know. It, just, it, it was a vanity thing. I mean, I'll be completely honest. I was like, yeah. I can do it. I know I can do, still do pull-ups. Like, yeah. I know I can still do them, but I don't need to show or prove to anybody else that, that I can do them. Um, so that kind of reminds me of like, you know, that whole thing, if you're not lifting, ego you're thing. pushing the yeah. bench, you know, it's an ego thing. And I was just reading something about the ego. Um, oh, I forget what it was, but I've been kind of diving into the whole ego thing. It's huge. It's, it's huge in oh, bodybuilding culture. Yeah. So that's why like, I'm an outsider. I was always that, but some, when I was in the community here, I just picked up the vibe, like being an outsider. Right. And, uh, but me, everyone in my following thinks that the strong confidence stand up for me, Pauline, I, going through all this mentality, noticing how this keeps me and I don't want to be it. Yeah. Like you, 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 because you become part of it. There's a collective mindset of this is what we believe in, this is what we don't and so on. Right. It's like, oh, yeah. and it's like almost like you're not allowed to kind of believe and, and take care of your body that, and all the body shaming. Yeah. I mean, all these years that I was, Paul said this to me yesterday. He said like, Pauline, this sounds funny and so on. But you know what I just realized, you know, I like I roll my eyes here, you know, and it's like we have not shot your body at all. You know, like I said, no, you know why, Pablo? I was never comfortable. I hated my I could not have I could not be on camera. I could not train on camera. I could not have the tiny outfits that I train in. No way. I would refuse. And that's me. I'm elite level. So then I wonder about all these women in the communities, right? What do you think is going to be when you can stand up for your body and be confident and happy? And this is how long it took for me. I had to get out of that environment and so on. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's well, very really in here. Yeah, it is. It is all up in here. I mean, so much of it is in here. So let's talk. Let's talk some basics, because I know that. Um, there, I'm going to have some people because whenever I, so for my 50th birthday, I don't know if you saw the picture, like I put a picture up and I said, this is my 50, like this is my 50. It's not what you're 50. And that's what I was insinuating, like not what your 50 should be, but it's my 50. I'm still doing these things. I'm going to keep doing it as long as I can, you know, like you can, you can do it too, if you want it. So blah, blah, blah. So you and I, like, we know what it takes. Like we know the nutrition, we know what we need to be eating. And there's so much confusion out there. There's so many, I mean, diets that people want to do. Um, and I, I've probably, you know, over the years tried different things. And, but one thing has always been the case is protein. Like I always get my protein in. And so can you tell, tell us a little bit about nutrition and how we should be eating in our forties and fifties, thirties moving, you know, thirties plus, um, there's a lot of misinformation or just not knowing how much protein should women be eating to grow the muscle that they want. Yeah, I actually think there's an overemphasis on protein, and I'm a high protein person, a lover. And in my nutrition, I actually do check out the protein. I don't do the macros. I think it's ridiculous waste of time mm -hmm. because it all adds up to the same sum anyway. But the protein, I have a range because your body isn't a thing of you don't build muscle acutely 24-7 in, out, in, out, like the scale. Right. It's a more of a trend what you do continuously. Like like building a nation, you have to run an economy. So you might have to make a plan, where do you wanna go and then stick to it. If you don't, there's gonna be inflation, there's gonna be recession, all that stuff. 
So when you want to lose fat and get strong, you have to keep a calorie budget that is designed to make that goal happen, that is going to achieve. Like this is the amount of energy it takes to achieve a certain body range that is designed for your species. It's the same for a cat as an elephant, as a human, that you base your weight on a certain amount of calories just to keep a range. Mm -hmm. Now, people don't like that I say, hey, here's your range because everyone loves freedom. But that's because you forget that you want to have results. You don't care only about how you eat. You want to get somewhere with all this. You don't just want to eat. So that is why I say you have to make this budget and then stick to it so it's consistent. Over time, that adds up to the whole sum. So day in, day out, you count the days. So you're compliant, keeping the new trend. The new trend is what your body detects is the nature. This is your environment. Your body has to, to adapt. It cannot stay fat from what you're not eating. So now when you're changing and you're eating the way I call POBO, prevent overeating by overeating, you're actually stopping what gets you in trouble. You're eating up so you're full and stuffed like a big glutton pig like me. And then you can stick to your diet. You're not caving on all being hungry and don't know what to do with an empty stomach because you're told to fast or be on a semi bull crap. And so, so then you can stand strong in the last hour of the day, which everyone goes to Hershey's Kisses and you can't even notice it's a small, so it fills in. So then you wake up the next day happy because you remember what did you eat, what did you do, do you train. How do you feel then? You feel great and you're on track. Right. So then you get rewarded that you did the way you want to live and feel the next day. But here's the thing what women do. You forget that. So you just want to be in the moment where you just, I see what I want, this, 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 this. Oh, I hope I can make it. And then you think about the scale. Oh, maybe I can just hope for it. You eat and then start over tomorrow. That never happens. Now that is a destructive way of behavior because you become that. How do you trust yourself? You lose all the trust in yourself over and over. So that is kind of a little bit of what I do. I teach women how to eat for satiety. And I teach you how to treat yourself and indulge in moderation without the consequence of self-sabotage. That's what I teach you. Yeah. And it works because yeah. your your way of your pobo way definitely works. Yeah. I mean, so I got to, uh, this is a really good one to say, like I'm, I teach you to master your mind so you can master your body. There's mm -hmm. no way around it. So, because everyone is going to quit. I say, you know, when people say, I don't know why I forget my, why, I, I, why can't I, why can't I want it? Because I have a kryptonite challenge. It says, you're going to sit with yourself and notice that you think you want to be strong. Then you notice you don't, you want to have this in front of you more than you want to be strong for yourself. So you're going to know like, yeah, this is not making me leaner. You're still going to go for it. What are you going to do? And people are I don't know. Why don't I want it? It's like, you're human. You just don't know that in, a, in your mind, your body, it's like your universe. You're trying to want to die. And you think you wouldn't have a problem. You want the body to know that, hey. So I say like this. If you just walked around in my life and like all of a sudden you died because you forgot to eat, that would be bad. So don't blame your body for watching out that it cares that you are alive. You're the only thing that matters. So that's why it's a little fight inside. Yeah. And once you once you understand that fight and you can kind of feel it going on, you make you you start to get it. It's yeah. almost like you have to you have to get into and feel it and go, OK, this is this is what that feels like. This is what that yeah. feels like. And um, I I can relate on so many levels. But once you get into it and you start to build the habits and you you're eating, you know, and I like what you said, because I aim for the protein, too. I'm not perfect with it every day. I know. I know a range. I know how my body feels when I, when I eat enough, um, protein, but I don't stress about it. Maybe like I did, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Um, cause everybody wants to be told, well, what do I eat? What do I eat? And it's, they want the exact plan. <laughs> everybody yeah. always wants you to hand them like this. Oh, eat this, but they're never yeah. going to do it. They're never going to do it. They don't, well, they don't do it unless you, know, you have to teach them how to, um, to, to know what they need and to feel it and to experience it. And then it's like, oh, okay, this makes sense. That's the way I, I see it. Well, most women that I know, or maybe it's just me, have never pretty much this. Nobody who has ever had an idea that they should go on a diet has ever come out of that with knowing how to maintain without either being on fat loss mode right. or eating anything. Inside. There's no in between. There's right. Women cannot see that, that. What do you mean? Moderate? Enjoy? So here's the thing. Everyone comes to me and they want to plan. When I put myself on my first plan, 
many, many years ago, I couldn't even last a day because what I learned about myself, I didn't know then, is that I have to give myself every day that I have all the freedom to choose whatever I want. Because if I put it in the plan, I get the rebellion. I get the fittest rebellion that I don't want to work the way I set my plan up. So I'm, I'm going against my own word. So I know that I have to present it to me every day that I can eat whatever I want and then I choose whatever. It's going to be pretty much the same. Right. But I have to have the choice. I have to have free choice of what I want to do with my body. It's my right. So I just knew that. So it's all about learning your little triggers so you can kind of dance tango with yourself. You have to seduce your mind to be able to kind of, you have to lie, lie, lie. And I said, well, everyone is good at that anyway. Just let, let's do it in a good way so you actually get something out of it, you know? Right. So that's, you know, how you have to learn to kind of, you're going to eat everything. You're going to have everything you want, but not tomorrow. So that's what you do. You win over a little bit. Right. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm kind of making the the parallels here between what you're saying and how, you know, you know your triggers and you're working on changing your habits to what we do as therapists. Like, you know, it's, it's fascinating to me. We're just, it's, we're just, it's a similar thing yet different at the same time, because when I'm working with somebody and they come to me and they want to, you know, change their lives or change their behaviors first, at first they're like, if it weren't for so-and-so, my life would be different. If it weren't for this, my life would be different. I'm like, wait a minute. We have no control over what that person does. We have no control over what that event that just happened to you. What we do have control over is you. And how do you want to show up in this world? Like you're telling me you want to be different. What do you think? What do you think that's, what would that look like for you? And then what do you think you need to do? So it's, you know, it's a similar concept. Um, we're just taking it and we're putting it over here to, um, to help our health and to add the muscle and to, I like to say, you know, live strong and live with high confidence and live optimally and vibrantly. That's the the way I say it. Um, when I think about why do I continue to go to the gym and, you know, lift weights and stuff, I mean, definitely love how I look and I, I, I appreciate that. But at the same time, um, I have strength, like I have strength for whatever I say comes my way. And it's not just physical. I mean, you know, I'm still, a, I, there's certain things I can't do, but I have stamina and I have um, the ability to at least try for things that I probably wouldn't have, you know, if I had never stepped into the, into the gym, into the weight room. So I always love it when I get to connect with other women who, you know, lift weights and who live this lifestyle, because it's like, we get it. Like I get you, you know, like I, yeah. or we're different, but yet we're similar. Um, okay. So what other, what other myths are there? for women in their like thirties and above when it comes to, um, you know, well, I want to, yeah. One, one thing is that women believe in the fasting and everyone loves to do the fast cardio. And I'm just going to say this, that if it worked, that be fast, that is the way to lose fat. You could beat anything, pizza, carbs, anything, chips at night and still lose fat in the morning because you fasted. So that doesn't work. No. Number two is that you think you got away because you have a cheat day and you're going to think that since the scale didn't move the next day, even though you ate chocolate and ice cream, that you got away. So you think that's okay. So you're kind of happy and you keep going back to your routine, diet start Monday. Then all of a sudden, three, four days later, you notice why do I feel saggy, accumulating body fat? What happened? Then you start thinking, oh, it's PMS or menopause. Here's the hormones again. Every woman blames their own endocrinology. Stop that. Okay. So, so then that is just, it took a little time for the fat to accumulate. Right. So what yes. you ate on Sunday shows up on Thursday. Right. Now every woman gets mad and thinks, oh, why am I fat? What, does, what do women do when you feel bad? eat again so it's like everyone just uses food and don't want to be responsible everyone wants to be like a little toddler around food and just allow yourself to just do whatever so i'd say how do you see yourself in a relationship because your own self-relationship is the most important thing i know myself i don't care about cheating mentality it's not about getting away so if you make it into this kind of ooh desire desire and then you're gonna try to resist temptation that is you saying like this you're in a relationship you say, you cannot cheat on me. If you cheat on me, I'm going to do this and that. It becomes what the person's going to do because it becomes this, it's, it's, it's evil. It's forbidden. Hello, the Eden's garden, the snake. You make that into fitness and nutrition with your nutrition and you never get out of it because you can always sabotage and eat more and gain fat because you're naturally driven to do that. But to lose fat is going to have so many blocks 
physically. And I know that women are not even aware. You think it's just, I want to lose weight. What is the problem with me? I get hungry. Everything is trying to stop you. That's why you suddenly get all crazy. So I noticed a lot of women think they're weird because they say, I want to be strong now. I want to be strong. And then next moment, I want all the cupcakes. It's like, it's like I try like, yeah, you got to work on that. So it's almost like this. Women who have had all the kids and career and all that and then forgot about fitness life coming now at 50, noticing that they can't get away with what they used to get away with because they never solved the whole eating thing. So that's what I mean. The diet culture got to be break up with diet prison, end up in diet paradise yeah. with me, fighter at Nirvana. Right. Yeah, definitely. Fighter diet Nirvana. I love that. And that's so- this life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what up? Okay. So here's another, another example. So yoga. Oh, go ahead. What were we going to say? Oh, I want to say this too. There's another myth that women have about, um, you know, the, the hormones or something like I have hypothyroidism and I have, I'm medicated for it, but I remember all the years I felt shame and guilt because I was, I thought that I was, um, what do you say when you are a fake? Because I was supposed to have a perfect Imposter. metabolism because I was a fitness model and you're not supposed to have hypothyroidism. You're supposed to be fat. And I made it my whole mission. I'm like, I'm going to prove the world that you don't have to because I was just like, I'm going to show everyone. But I felt so like, I felt like, you know, that I couldn't be mm. honest. And me, I'm a so transparent. It felt like I was lying to people that I was not, all, you know, and it was like, it's, no, it was guilt in hindsight that I see how it is and so on. But the whole thing with women is that everyone's trying to save face mm-hmm. by being so strong, being all that and show I can still do this. And I'm, I'm just wondering here, like, what are we trying to, to, to prove that you're 20? That is not something to achieve. I'm trying to make women think about aging as the same way we do in growing muscle maturity that I remember backstage when I was 20 I was looking at a woman who was competitor who was a world champion she was 40 and so and I was like in awe looking at her and I think I remember I was like wow if I train hard for another 15 years I'm gonna have her muscles that was my expectations of time nowadays people have like two hours and I'm just like you can never get it so it's like almost like everyone has lost an eye concept of what it takes right. so I'm just bringing back reality because here's the thing if you understand that you don't want to get out of fitness life, when you're done with your meal little plan, what are you going to do? So I talk about the after diet life, that everything works as long as you're doing your meals that you're happy with and you're so happy you love everyone loves them and the training. But then you get bored, diet depression, boredom with workouts. Now you don't know what to do. And there is where you go straight into regaining everything because all or nothing. So I teach how to revise, adjust, because it's like you don't, you don't, nutrition is not one meal plan. If nutrition is a whole science and it's like a cuisine, do you see Italian cuisine just have one recipe? No. And the whole thing is to learn about human nature, that if you don't get stimulated with new things, excitement in food, it doesn't matter how much you say to me as your coach that you don't need to eat for pleasure. You just need to eat what you know. It's all bull because we know you check out from your conscience the moment you don't want to be strong anymore and you want to go and hide, come back to community. So then when you worked it off, your fat gain, and then you can kind of stay and look strong again. I'm trying to get that open up. So in my community, my coaching, I bring all women up to, hey, I'm telling you all these stories about all the glut and all the things I've done. And apparently you are all so much stronger. So how come I have the body and you don't? So I'm having all these women now share this. We can work as a community to stop having all this eating disorders. That is like a fitness community. Like everyone is like pretending and then it's body shaming that you, yeah, your body's not going to be perky all the time, but you're still going to have to love it. Can you change the way you see it? So you see it as beauty, what you consider is ugly, then everything changes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But how we do it together. Right. Yes. And that's so true. I mean, it's what you, what you said is, is so true. We have, we have to find peace with, with ourselves first Yeah, and we have to, you know, we just have to re- recognize that, you know, things that we want, it takes time to yeah. get them, you know, like you can't just order it and have it. You no, just can't. And you, know, and you know, sorry, like I get so passionate about this, but I must <laughs> say this too. In my community with like I see my, my fellow trainers, I'm not, I'm not a hanging out person. I'm a troglodyte. So I st- stay, keep around, but I, I observe. 
women who are like me, broken down or have been training for a long time. I think it's, we need these voices who don't have the bodies that people are like, oh yeah, she's old, but the bodies that people want, right? Like I have a body people want to have and I'm not 20. So we need to stand up and show how we train for real that we have to show the pains. Like arthritis here, pain bursitis. I have gout. I mean, I don't live according to gout. That's supposed to drink and be obese, but I got it. We need to have that so people see it's not the end, it's a start. Right. And if you can change that you're not doing this because you have to, you do it because you love it. Right. And when you love it, you're going to keep doing it and you're going to change the way to so stop treating your body like a trash can. Stop, stop joining other women and together bully your body because it's not good enough and you're never going to be lean enough. You're never going to be strong enough. I'm going to say this thing. You will never be strong enough or lean enough or muscular enough. So you just have to accept that and be happy because you're going to be forever doing it anyway. Yeah. And that in of itself, you know, having that mindset and wanting it all the time and, t- and living like is, is a, in itself, not very healthy. I mean, you know, we see that as therapists, you know, it's orthorexia, you know, yeah, for sure yeah. you're coming in. So it's almost like the opposite of, um, yeah. of eating disorders. I don't, Oh, that's definitely an eating disorder. Yeah. yeah. Orthorexia. Orthorexia. Yeah. Well, yeah. But just like the mindset of everything has to be healthy all the time. Yeah. You're always like thinking about it. That can be, um, that that's a really, can be really difficult for a lot of people, but also too, even if you, even if you're not dealing with, um, some type of, you know, diagnosis, but you have these thoughts or you have these feelings, um, they're not good enough, you know, type a, like gotta be perfect. Yeah. Have a hard time yeah. relaxing. Victim mentality. That's yeah. how I feel it yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's you have to, you just, you know, this is important, I think for, for everybody, because it's a lifestyle, but it's not like something that you want to overtake your life, you know, like in the sense of always thinking about, because you got to live, like you got to go out and you got to live your life. And, you know, there's so many other things. Like I took a whole week off last week. Um, didn't work out. I, you know, ate, like I like to eat, um, still walked, still got my water and did all the things that I know to be healthy for me, but I didn't stress about it. Cause I knew when I got home, I'd get right back into it. Or if, you know, I knew that it's such a lifestyle for me now that when I got home, it, it would just be right, right back into it. So, um, I love this conversation. I'm, I'm so, I'm so grateful to have, you know, to have been trained under you for, for, I want to say, I think I've done like three or four challenges. I'm really excited to, um, do the program, the one that you're working on now with your app. I, Oh, you know, you I'm going to send app. you that. I have a free trial. I have a free oh, trial. But didn't you have an app? You. But didn't you have yeah, an app before? I did. did you it's not there no, anymore. No, okay. because it was during the lockdown and then the, it, good luck doing that. It's like it was impossible. Okay. And then so it's like too much development and I'm like just one person and it's like, you know, everything. So what I did last year, I just changed my training and documented it all. So I did work as on demand. So pretty much this, what you see is what I do. And I okay. come out with all kinds because... There is no, like, I want to cure so there's no workout boredom and no workout short. Like, people said they can't do it because they don't have time. I just, like, I'm not going to give that to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to prove, like, that's not, that's not okay. Yeah. And then when, you know, so, yeah, definitely the 10 minutes workout on the okay. screen. So, uh, I'm so excited about that. So, what I'm developing is the Bo- Fighter Diet app with eat this, train this. So, it's like the whole fitness life in an app. That would be great with community. So um, that just takes a lot of uh, time and yeah. development of that. So that's, uh, I got all the time in the world because this is all I love to do. And, uh, you know, so this is what I do. So are you home right now? Is that your, your yeah. apartment? Your, is that your house yeah. and you have all your workout equipment no, it's there? A, yeah, I work out at home. So I have, I'm a minimalist trainer. So it's pretty much uh, dumbbells, mats, and foam wedges. Oh, you haven't done any of those. Oh, okay. So yeah, you're going to try some of the workouts. Paula can send the quick list to that. Yeah. Okay. So you have to do that. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited to hear that. No, uh-huh. I am excited. I, um, you know, I've tried so many things over the years and, you know, I always come back to like compound movements, like your fighter diet challenges where you're, you have us deadlifting and squatting and benching. I mean, are, but there's that- a problem with that. There's a problem with that. I'm going to say what? Say it. I haven't seen your forum, Lisa, <laughs> at all. So, but I'm going to talk about the women who've been the- training. No, yeah. but the, the women have been training heavy and hard competitors, the same fellow equal mind style. Mm-hmm. They 
are the ones who need to come in to confess to themselves that they're not even breaking to parallel, which they consider is ash to the grass. And they are rounding the back and are completely deactivating the glutes that they think they want to perkify. They want to build them, but they refuse to change the range of motion. They refuse to let go of the heavy lift, the heavy weight, right. to increase the range of motion, to stop injured, to stop breaking your back, because it's too tough to handle from a type A personality that you are not stronger than that. You have to work like an athlete without a sport on your form and coach yourself because you can't build on quicksand. And that's what everyone is doing. So I'm just trying to just like open up here. So that's why I'm just leading it by showing how weak I am and I love it. And then just like happy and show. So pretty much like this, you can join just to see what I'm doing and mm-hmm. learn a lot and make your own programs as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you off air who, whose program I'm currently doing and you can tell me what you think, but yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't go super heavy because I, I want to watch my form. You know, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm doing things correctly and I don't want to injure myself. So, um, and that's well, been a change for me for over the past 10 years. Cause I used to like to go heavier, but I know my form wasn't great. I mean, I mean, but that's a whole other conversation that we can have another yeah we're gonna say say when you go and you train with me on camera or you follow you're gonna everything you talked about here is like oh okay now i get it so pretty much this the workout stuff and so on just see i lead you follow and try it out get the experience and that's it because time flies and nobody has time to just talk we want to build muscle so that's what i want you to do try it out and then you know if you love it keep doing it yeah well i'll definitely you know i'll try it out (laughs) i'll do it yeah um so is there anything else that you want to share with our listeners about yes yes keep going um i want to make sure that everyone understands that the way to get lean and stay lean is to learn how to stuff yourself so your belly is going to be like this oh gosh okay (laughs) when you have that you are not going to have the ba- the bad craving that makes you not able to stay. When you are trying to do fasting or, or keto or anything, you are naturally going to increase your way of wanting to eat because you're not feeling full. Right. So that is why McDonald's is like how people can eat nothing. They think they eat nothing. But because the food is so dense, it's like jet fuel, that you are just going to be hungry all the time, but you're eating more and more calories for 10 people. So that is what I'm trying to make everyone aware that you just look at it very like naively that, oh, it's not a big deal. But one Hershey's kiss is more than 10% of what a woman used to need in energy for a whole day. But nowadays it's like almost like 50% cut off because we're sitting all day long. Right. Yeah. 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 And that's another thing too. We, we do sit so much. We're not moving like we used to. Yeah. Um, so on top of the workouts that you're doing and the nutrition, is there anything else that you would um suggest that we women need to be doing okay yes uh i would say this you can uh, and uh, you can edit this out as much you want (laughs) um lisa i would like to have you as a lisa master code to join my use like my challenge fd8 july okay that if they can join with your code Mm -hmm. you know paul and so on can uh make whatever so i can be your coach as a complimentary so i sir i offer as my you have me as a personal coach that i'm here to help you usually i have coach calls and texts and so on but that's how close i keep with them because i know that when you are happy you're gonna spread it forward you're gonna i want to make as many dreams happen as as fast as possible body dreams so that's why i work so close together so Please spread it about the FDA July, start July 5. Okay. And I want you in it to get the experience. So I would love that. Okay. All right. So, well, I'll talk to Pavel about getting all that all set up. So if somebody signs up for, I, I mean, I'm going to sign up for, what will those workouts be though? Are they going to be these 10 minute a day kind of workouts or are they going to be, what, oh, what are the workouts yeah. going to be now? Because I'm used to like, I'm used to the Pauline butt Bible. I'm used to the shred and whatever, you know, like your shred yeah. challenge. So, so how has it changed? No. So when you go into FD8, you're going to get a new book with a new program exactly the way you had it before. Okay. It's based on traditional lifting. You have all these tips on how to succeed in your fitness journey. Okay. You get this great book that is exclusive to that challenge. Then you are in a challenge group on Facebook where you have the community, where I go and have my live lessons, where you learn from others, where I have count the days, kryptonite challenge, the compliance, everything there that you need. It's almost like having a muscle fitness subscription 
time, but in a group. Mm-hmm. And you can come there and get access to all this knowledge and me. You don't you don't have access to that otherwise. So that's how it is. Mm-hmm. So and then we practice together day in, day out to do this because that is what you have to know. And I teach you how to be adherent. And when you are struggling, this is where you go and get help. So you stay strong. Gotcha. So but you can also choose to convert from this typical traditional lifting to my way of training. And that's when you can use the video to simply just use that instead for the book. The difference is letting go of writing up stuff and stop over uh, over managing to free up your life from all this stuff that just makes you not want to do it. Right. Give up on comparison lift and just go with how does your body feel? Trust the biofeedback, trust the way you feel, trust how you feel pumped and not broken and trust the feeling what makes you happy. That is it. So that is, you can just choose because it's nutrition number one anyway. And the training is going to be according to how much you want. There's no such thing as, let's say, I say that for most amount of body composition changes, it's good to train six days a week a lot. Because the more you work it, the more you're going to have an ability to just lose more weight, like biggest loser. You train eight hours a day for a reason. But if you don't want to, let's say you just want to come in and practice how to live your life. To have fitness life as your life, your way of life without falling down into Thanksgiving cupcakes, you know, and, and, and though you want to be consistent. So you keep the way you feel and the body. You can just come in and do exactly eat and train to your level. That's what I mean. The 10 minutes and here's what you eat right now. Get off, get over the whole of over planning your future because you don't even have it. And just, you know, you're going to be in love with this menu and the chocolate and it and the chips and everything yeah. for now, but you're going to fall in love and fall out of it. And that's when we just add a new plan that you can be excited about. Yeah. You do that over and over and over. That's how you live life. Right. And I do, and I'm, I'm excited to, um, to give fighter diet eight. You said it's eight, right? Fighter diet eight. Yes, yes, FDA, eight okay. weeks. Eight eight weeks. So it's eight weeks because I think I'm used to the 12-week challenges. That's maybe yeah. the last time I did one. Um, this was over COVID um, when I was probably during your last challenge. So, and I love your nutrition plan. It's really good, you guys. She, I mean, I won't give it away, but I have a new appreciation for oat bran after working with Molly oh, that I never good. knew existed. I love oat bran. It's like my favorite thing ever now. Um, and I know you love it too. It's, oh. Yeah, it gives the best poop, you know. That yeah. Nothing makes you feel better than after the excellent, I call it the luxury poop. Yeah. I mean, that's what you get from me. It's like, oh, you know, when you have a smile, you walk out of life like, oh, there's no problem I can't have <laughs> because you feel so cleansed, right? Yeah. That's everyday in fighter diet paradise. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, we will put all the links in the show notes so you guys can sign up for F fighter diet eight and come join it with me. We're going to have a lot of fun. Um, and I will help be your accountability. Now, part of the reason you didn't see me in the Facebook groups so much is because I just got so over, I'm coming. I got so over Facebook that I just like stopped logging on. So, um, I just want you to know if that's, if you're like me, you, you can still get plenty of, um, support, but just by going in the group every now and then and checking in, you don't have to be in there all the time. If that's not, you know, your thing, because I get overwhelmed with social media and I'm trying to take up, take a break. Me too. But, um, I know that Pauline is, will answer questions and she's very, um, accessible. She's very kind. And I am just, I'm just thrilled. So thank you so much for being here. This has just been awesome. Can I tell you, uh, share one last thing. Yeah. So. This is exactly, you are, you need a lot of space for yourself and I'm a loner and I could be without any communication for all my life and be so happy, but that's not how you reach people and help people. So that's my mission. And that is why I have a a public service on my podcast, my stream of my thoughts that is 100% free of service that everyone can just listen and learn everything from mindset with me. And there's just free flow of everything. So trust me, you're on your own when you're watching because I'm completely uncensored. I talk about everything, but it's related to fitness life and be strong on your own. And I'm child-free by choice. I'm an independent. I don't want to have a husband and kids and wife uh, or a life. So I'm a kind of an alternative lifestyle. And I need that because we need diversity in fitness lives. So everyone sees you don't have to be a certain way. You can do this and you're simply successful 
in my world, if you eat healthy and exercise that makes you happy and you're consistent so you can live a healthy life and you're happy, that's all I'm asking for that makes my life. Yeah, well, I, I can totally get that. And I appreciate your honesty and, you know, letting us know like what you're about. And I think that that helps even more women to know that there's so many different ways that we can be in this world. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So Pauline, oh my gosh, I can't wait for <laughs> July. What do we say? July 5th. All yeah, right. I'll yeah. see you there for sure. But yes. And we'll put all your links in the show notes so you guys can get more Pauline. We'll put, you know, link to your podcast and fight or diet and come find you on Facebook, but come find you um, under your name, not fight or diet, because we know that that got hacked. So you guys don't pay attention to that. Um, and there's a free group too, right? There's a free Fighter yes, there's group, a right? fighter diet group, the fighter okay. warriors, and yeah. you can also connect with me, send me an email. Like I'm, I'm accessible because this is where I'm here. I'm here yeah. to answer questions. So okay, we'll put yeah. all that there. All right, yeah, all right. Well, I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lisa. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Well, that wraps up another episode of the Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard. I know there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there, and I'm thankful you've chosen to listen to mine. Be sure to visit lisamuster.com to access the show notes and discover more fantastic content. And I'd be grateful if you subscribe to the show. Thank Thank you. you.